I would like to talk about the impact of the climate change on emerging infectious disease. I will associate that with a phenomenon which is named El Nino, South Oscillation. What is El Nino La Nina? It's a difference of temperature in the South Pacific Ocean between Tahiti and the Peru and the Chile. It is the largest reservoir of water on the planet, the largest ocean. So when there's some variations in temperature, it may affect the climate at any point of the globe, particularly in the Horn of Africa. In the Horn of Africa, it has been seen that when there is an El Nino event, meaning a warm oscillation, then there is flooding on the Horn of Africa. It is visible by satellites. It is also visible, of course, on the ground. And when there is flooding for months, for three consecutive months, during an El Nino event, it has been shown clearly that it is associated with risk of outbreaks of Rift Valley fever, of malaria and of cholera. Rift Valley fever is a very dangerous virus. It is an arthropod-borne virus, meaning that it needs a mosquito. And the mosquito may bite both the cattle and the human. So it is a devastating viral disease because it is a deadly virus, like Ebola, we could say, as serious and severe as Ebola virus, but it affects also the cattle. So the poor people, the poor population, very vulnerable from the Horn of Africa may have a risk of losing their cattle and losing lives. So to prevent Rift Valley fever is very important. And because it is associated to El Nino, it has to be said that due to the climate change, there is more frequent and more intense episodes of El Nino events on the globe. So because of the cha climate change, the risk of emerging infectious disease in this part of the world is increased. And it has been shown that in other parts of the world, in Bangladesh, for instance, or also in Brazil, because of El Nino event, you may have and you may suffer from other disease, maybe dengue or maybe cholera. That's one point. The vector-borne disease and many other diseases, tropical disease, may increase due to El Nino and because the climate change may affect the frequency and the severity of El Nino, we may have and we may foresee in the future that we will have more frequently El Nino event and then therefore more frequently outbreaks of these infectious deadly viruses. The other point I wanted to, to show is on the north latitudes, in the global north, or the temperate zone, even in the south hemisphere, there are some connections between La Nina event, which is a cold oscillation, which is linked to the warm oscillation. When there is a warm oscillation, there is a cold oscillation. So if a Nino is more frequent due to climate change, La Nina will become more frequent and more intense also due to climate change. And La Nina is associated with more severe and more intense outbreaks of influenza epidemics in Europe, in the USA, or in Australia. So when there is La Nina event, the risk of a pandemic flu is increased. It has been clearly published also. And the risk of seasonal influenza is increased in terms of intensity and severity. What does that mean? Intensity for an outbreak of influenza, that means a large epidemic with many, many cases, with large absenteeism also, and uh, an increased number of hospitalizations. And the severity means an increased number of hospitalizations again, and also an increased number of deaths. So there is an increased number of deaths when there is La Nina event. So because of the climate change, both, we will have more frequently El Nino, more frequently La Nina events, and both these events are related to emerging infectious disease, sometimes disease affecting the global north, sometimes disease the most deprived countries in the global south.